Hello and welcome to Tyndall Square, a square in the middle of Chelmsford that has so much history involved with it. All around there are buildings and these buildings, some of them have some really interesting stories to tell. The square itself, as far as we know, goes back to 1199 when Bishop St. Mare en Glise, the Norman Bishop, decided to turn Chelmsford from an agricultural community into a market town. And he applied to the king, King John, to set up a market here. That market happened every Friday. Then we went on a few years later, he decided to push the limits a bit more and to have a fair. And so a fair came here. But the original market was in this area. In fact, Tyndall Square wasn't known as Tyndall Square, it was known as Market Place. In the middle of the 13th century, the Black Friars arrived in Chelmsford and they made a friary in Molsham. But they decided that they would get the town a fresh water supply and they laid that in across the fields and it came up in this area. The area then became known as Conduit Square because the conduit water stream came out. Now originally that was uh, in a fountain which was actually uh, a naiad or water nymph statue with dolphins around the bottom and water flowing out of it. That naiad statue still exists today and it's in storage, safe storage, in Shire Hall in the ground floor in a wooden box. But what replaced the naiad? Well, what replaced the naiad was the rotund, which was a tall structure with a, a, structure with a, a, a round roof on it and that stood in the middle of the square. Eventually, that was replaced by another statue, and that was that of Judge Tyndall. Judge Tyndall's statue appeared in 1851. Now, Judge Tyndall was born in Chelmsford, a very important man, and he eventually became the Lord Chief Justice. In his time as Lord Chief Justice, he devented royalty and also he represented and changed criminal law. The insanity defence term was in fact brought out by Judge Tyndall. A year after Judge Tyndall's statue appeared, they renamed the square after him and also Tyndall Street as well, which was at that time called Conduit Street. And those names now are still in existence as an honour to the judge. Now this building behind me appeared in 1919, but before that there were three shops here and one of those was a grocer's owned by Mr Fulton Cat. He then passed it on to his son Ralph Cat. Number three Tyndall Square was originally a baker's but in 1888 a man called Frederick Spaulding took over the property. Frederick Spaulding from Danbury came to Chelmsford and he set up a business as a bird stuffer and furniture restorer but he had a hobby which was photography and he decided to turn that hobby into a business and became Chelmsford's first professional photographer. Now his son was also born in Chelmsford, Fred, and he grew up in that building. On top of the building you can see a sort of greenhouse structure. That in fact is his first daylight studio, which he had built for the purpose. Young Fred grew up at number, number three and during his childhood he watched all activities in the square. One of these was the fair that came quite frequently to this area and he would see 
the fairground people with all sorts of things going on, but they erected roundabouts in this area and various stalls. And it was really quite interesting to him the way that the lifestyle of those people was different to everybody else. But eventually that fair became not so, so um, popular because people found that they could get on the railway and go into other places where there were bigger fairgrounds. And so eventually the fair disappeared. On the west side of the square had been the house owned by the Wallinger family since the 14th century. In 1855, this property was bought by the trustees of the Chelmsford Corn Exchange Company, who were looking for a new site to conduct a building for this purpose. Frederick Chancellor, a new up-and-coming architect, was then awarded the contract to design this new building, which had an ornate neoclassical front with a functional wide airy interior. The building was opened for business on Friday 12th June 1857, its original purpose was to house the corn market, but it also was used as the administration centre for the open market next door. On the ground floor, it had three arched entrances with a large arched window each side. On the upper floor, it had five arched windows with an ornamental balcony and a parapet above. Behind the brick front facade, was a high arched glass roof supported by massive cast iron girders. This had the effect of providing an interior which was well lit by natural light. The rear of the building finished level with Threadneedle Street. The inauguration of the borough of Chelmsford took place in 1888 and a key part of the celebrations was a public dinner which took place in the Corn Exchange. The partying continued outside in the square into the night under the new experimental electrical street lighting lamps supplied by Colonel Crompton's electrical company. In November 1809, the suffragettes Sylvia Pankhurst and Flora Drummond and Hel Helena Hogston visited Chelmsford as they were, there was an up-and-coming mid-Essex by-election. Meeting in the Corn Exchange, both Sylvia and Helen gave speeches. However, the crowd in Tyndall Square soon became rowdy, with hecklers accosting women. They took refuge in the Bell Hotel next door, but they were pleased their voice had been heard. When the Corn Exchange ceased to be used for its original use, new uses were found for this wonderful building. One was an ex as an exhibition hall and one of the people that regularly exhibited was the Chelmsford Star Co-op. At Christmas time it was also hired for the parties for companies like Hoffman's and Marconi's. Much later it became a roller skating rink and then a music concert venue. In the 1960s on a Saturday night it became a live music venue the teenagers of the day would dance on the dusty floor, floorboards to a number of groups, including Pink Floyd and Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix's first video was actually shot in the Corn Exchange on the edge of Tyndall Square. The next big change happened in 1969, when the Corn Exchange was demolished and an attempt to modernise the city centre. Not only had this popular iconic building been part of the square for some 112 years, it also held many special local memories. The administration centre for the market was known as the Great Cross Courthouse, which was also used as a corn exchange. This building stood in front of where Shire Hall is today. The town became the seat of local assizes during the early 13th century and by 1218 was recognised as the county town of Essex. The court sessions that were held in the Great Cross Courthouse, one of which saw the trial of Elizabeth Lowes as the first lady in the country to be convicted under the new Witchcraft Act. 
In July 1645, Matthew Hopkins, the witch finder general, held one of his first trials in the same building when he condemned 29 women in just two days. The Shire Hall was designed by John Johnson and was built in 1790 using the same stone and contractors as the stone bridge, again with additions of code stone decorations. In 1858, there was a new addition to the east side of the square, the Sebastopol Cannon. This was presented by Queen Victoria to the town as an appreciation of their involvement in the Crimea War. It stayed on its plinth in front of the Shire Hall until 1937 when it was moved to Oaklands Park following an incident reported in 1908 when it was fired as part of an apprentice prank. The clock on Shire Hall was presented by Sparrows Bank and installed almost 100 years later in 1887. The unveiling ceremony was a big event and coincided with Queen Victoria's Golden Jubilee. At exactly 12 noon on the 21st of July 1887, the temporary curtains were drawn back and a children's choir from the local school sang the national anthem accompanied by the band of the 2nd Middlesex Regiment. The inside of the building was last refurbished in 1936. A new courthouse opened in 2012 and the Shire Hall has undergone extensive restoration to the exterior. The new use is still undecided but is a treasured listed local building and one of the city's greatest landmarks. This building in the High Street was once the post office and built in 1908 based on a design by Reginald Bloomfield. On the ground floor this had a public area with Victorian counters with a sorting office behind and a yard with vans and cycles at the back. On the first floor was a telephone exchange and on the top floor were the offices for the engineers. Next door were the bank chambers which were replaced the White Horse Inn in 1909. In 1888 the bank building was owned by Sparrows Bank who were later bought out by Barclays. The Saracens Head Inn built 1539 and rebuilt in 1724 as the Saracens Head Hotel. The name Saracen comes from the Crusades. This was an old coaching inn, the evidence being the carriage arch still to this day in place. The Chelmsford Fire Brigade was formed in 1869 and the yard behind the inn was where their horse-drawn fire engine was stored along with the stables for the horses. Until 1918, the Chelmsford Fire Brigade used horses to pull their fire appliances. In the 1890s, the Chelmsford Cycling Club had their photograph taken outside the Saracen's Head. This was an important venue with a number of meetings for the town council that would have taken place. During the Second World War, the Saracen's Head Hotel opened its doors to the American Red Cross. Known locally as the America Club, the hostel provided sleeping accommodation for 30 men as well as providing meals for over 300 soldiers per day. The hostel was kept separate from the Saracen's Head main bars and it even had its own entrance. The American officers were often visible and a constant present in the high street during the war years. The hostel also acted as an important hub for the American soldiers who could relax and mix with the locals. Over 150 women from Chelmsford volunteered their services to work in the new America Club. By the end of July 1945, the American Club closed. Although the Saracen's Head did not officially open and resume pre-war functionality until 1948. Behind me, at the corner of Waterloo Lane and New Street, was once the Greyhound Public House. In 1903, this was replaced by a purpose-built police station designed by Frank Whitmore. 
he designed the rotund front facade that we have and also a tunnel which connect the cells in the police station with the cells in Shire Hall and it's under that road still today.